Back at work, Winston sees Julia with her arm in a sling walking towards him. Suddenly, Julia trips and falls flat on her face. Instinctively, Winston extends his hand and helps her up. What happens next is a total shock. As she grabs his hand to lift herself up, she slips a tiny piece of paper into his hand. Winston can hardly stop his heart from beating furiously. Then, Julia strides swiftly away, as though nothing happened. What a scandal! After Winston goes to the bathroom, he returns to his cubicle. He can hardly wait to find out what is written on the paper. Have the thought police caught on? Or is this an invitation to join the secretive brotherhood? After a few minutes pass, he finally reads what is written on the paper. There, on the paper, are the words, I love you. Winston can't believe it. That night, his mind races. He just has to get in touch with her. But how? Meeting her alone would be dangerous, but he's even more scared that he might lose her interest if he doesn't respond quickly. A few days later, Winston manages to sit at a table in the canteen with Julia. They agree to meet at 7pm in a place called Victory Square. At their 7pm meeting, Julia tells him to take Sunday off. She gives him directions to a meet-up place outside of London. On Sunday, Winston follows her directions and meets her at a small grassy area surrounded by trees. They kiss and share their mutual disgust for the party. It's a match made in heaven. Winston and Julia continue to meet up in secret and Winston slowly learns more about her views on the party. He realises that she is not rebelling against its authority but simply evading it. Winston, on the other hand, longs for freedom and rebellion. Cut to Winston in Mr Charrington's shop again. Winston asks Mr Charrington if he can rent the spare room above the shop for his love affair with Julia. Mr Charrington happily agrees and even informs Winston of the two separate entrances. A few days later, Winston's colleague Syme has vanished. Winston isn't surprised. He always thought Syme was too intelligent for his own good. In Airstrip 1, stupidity is the goal. One day, when Winston is walking down a corridor of the Ministry of Truth, O'Brien comes to join him. He tells Winston that he has the newest edition of the Newspeak Dictionary and that Winston should drop by his apartment to take a look. Surely this arrangement means something more than a dictionary. Cut to O'Brien's lavish apartment. Winston and Julia enter nervously. To their surprise, O'Brien turns off the telescreen, something that can only be done by important party officials. Winston admits that he and Julia are thought criminals and having an affair. They don't believe in the party's ideology and want to tear it down. O'Brien offers them wine and raises a toast to our leader, to Emmanuel Goldstein. O'Brien is part of the Brotherhood. O'Brien asks them how far they would go for the Brotherhood. Winston and Julia say that they would do anything as long as they can stay together. Julia leaves first. Winston leaves next, with O'Brien promising to send him Goldstein's counter-revolutionary book. It seems perfect, almost too perfect. As promised, a few days later, Winston is handed a briefcase at a demonstration against the party's enemies. Winston doesn't dare look inside, but knows it contains Emmanuel Goldstein's book. In any case, Winston has no time to read the book because work at the Ministry of Truth has gone into overdrive. At the rally he attended, it was announced that Oceania is at war with East Asia. Hold on, 
This is brand new information. It looks like the party is changing history. In the past, they have always been at war with Eurasia and East Asia has always been Oceania's ally. It's now Winston's job to erase all records of the war with Eurasia and then never talk about it or think about it. Winston works more than 90 hours in five days to get it all done. And it's not like the party pays overtime. After an exhausting week, Winston slowly walks to his hiding place, carrying the heavy briefcase. Finally, after six days of lugging the book around, he can read the words of Emmanuel Goldstein. Once inside the room above the shop, Winston eagerly opens the book to peer into the pages. The book explains how the party increases poverty to maintain power and continues to wage war to stop the masses from becoming too comfortable and too intelligent. Big Brother has clearly got some serious issues. Julia enters the room and Winston reads the book aloud to her. The book also explains doublethink. Doublethink is when people accept two conflicting opinions or beliefs at the same time because a government has brainwashed them. The next morning, just when Winston is gaining freedom in his life, a disaster. In the room they thought was their sanctuary, an iron voice speaks from behind a picture on the wall. You are the dead. All of a sudden, they are surrounded. Armed men dressed in black grab Winston and Julia. Julia is dragged out of the room and Mr Charrington enters. Winston freezes. It's Mr Charrington, but the once white hair is now jet black. His body has straightened, his wrinkles are gone, and his nose seems shorter. Horrified, Winston realises that he is in the presence of a member of the Thought Police. They have been tricked all along. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on 1984, check out our summary of part three.